This video is brought to you by Nebula. If you head over to the link in the description, you can check out my Nebula class, where I teach you how to think about and analyze music like I do. Born to Run might just be the apotheosis of rock and roll music. When Bruce Springsteen released his third album, it marked the culmination of a movement that had been growing ever since a teenage truck driver named Elvis Presley first stepped into Sun Records. Springsteen's creative voice is one of the most distinctive and oft imitated in all of rock. But if we cut Born to Run open and take a look inside, we can see that the album itself is a beautiful mix of some of the greatest rock music ever made. Hi, I'm Head Chef Polyphonic, and today on Record Recipes, I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own Born to Run. To start off our Born to Run, we need to begin with a hearty bass of the king himself, Elvis Presley. Bruce Springsteen, like so many in his generation, was an Elvis disciple. In an interview with Far Out Magazine, Springsteen remembered what it felt like to hear Elvis's hound dog for the first time. You ain't nothing but a hound dog, the crying all the time. When I heard it, it just shot straight through my brain. I realized suddenly that there was more to life than what I'd been living. I was in the pursuit of something, and there'd been a vision laid out before me. Throwing some hound dog into the mix will give us that energetic boogie woogie that comes through on She's the One. Once your Elvis is starting to solidify, we want to pull flavors from across the pond into our pot, so we're going to throw together a little British Invasion mixture. The strongest flavors in this mix will obviously be the Beatles and the Stones, but for our particular take, we want to go heavy on the Shadows. The Shadows were an instrumental rock group popular in the late 50s and early 60s. Their biggest hit is Apache. You can hear the influence of these heavy guitar tones on back streets. <music> to complement that British invasion, we'll jump back to America and add in a dash of Dwayne Eddy, who was celebrated for his distinct electric guitar twang. <laughs> By now, your mix should be developing into some pretty standard rock and roll. You'll know it's working if it's thick with the scent of youthful vigor. But this standard rock and roll is a relatively simple recipe contained to basic verse-chorus-verse structures. If we want to cook a proper Born to Run, we're going to need something to sophisticate those structures. To do that, we want to take our rock and roll and marinate it in Roy Orbison for an extended period. Orbison was a contemporary of many of the early rock greats, but his songs were made to Distinct by more open structures. Pretty woman walking down the street. Pretty woman, the kind I like to meet. Pretty woman. These structures are essential to Born to Run, present in nearly every song, from the opening Thunder Road to the closing Jungle Land. This Orbison marinade will also help us give the deep, crooning vocal timbre that we want. Listen to Orbison's croon on Only the Lonely, a song that is itself referenced in Thunder Road. Only the lonely. Turn me home again, I just can't face myself. The Orbison marinade is one of three key ingredients that really give Born to Run its distinctive flavor. Springsteen himself said that the vision for the album was something that sounded like Roy Orbison singing Bob Dylan, produced by Phil Spector. So once our Orbison marinade has settled in, we want to light a burner on the stove and saute our mix while stirring in hearty helpings of Bob Dylan. 
Dylan is the single biggest influence on rock lyricism of the 60s and 70s. His abstract, poetic style laid the groundwork for a new kind of singer-songwriter. Lyrically, the Born to Run song that pulls most from Dylan might be Jungle Land, a sprawling, slow-moving album closer that feels at home next to Dylan's own slow-moving album closer, Desolation Row. They're selling postcards of the hanging They're painting the passports brown The beauty parlor is filled with sailors The rangers out of homecoming Been all on late last night And a magic rat drove his slick machine Over the Jersey State line We'll want a variety of Dylan stirred in here, but the biggest portion will certainly be Highway 61 Revisited, an album that formed much of the sonic blueprint for Born to Run. Just listen to the massive arrangements and powerful energy of Like a Rolling Stone. Springsteen emulated this explosive sound to great effect on Born to Run. Much of the sound of both Highway 61 and Born to Run are influenced by the producer Phil Spector. Spector was one of the most atrocious human beings ever to make a mark on the music industry, but unfortunately that mark was enormous. Spector's biggest innovation was the Wall of Sound, a production technique that involved creating enormous arrangements, filling every inch of sonic space with a different instrument. Horns, bells, pianos, strings, backup singers, and more were used to create this wall of sound. The dense mix created unique reverberations and resulted in a sound that was nothing short of an all-out, awe-inspiring attack on the listener. One of the greatest uses of the Wall of Sound was on Ike and Tina Turner's River Deep Mountain High, a song that has a clear influence on Born to Run. When I was a little girl, I had a breakup, only doll I've ever owned. So with a careful hand, we'll pull our Springsteen off the stovetop, let it sit for a minute, and glaze it with a wall of sound. We're almost there, but there's one final essential ingredient for Born to Run, the E Street Band, and in particular, Clarence Clemens. No Born to Run would be complete without the big man's roaring saxophones, as featured beautifully in Jungle Land. So once we get that Clarence Clemens in there, our prep work for Born to Run is complete. All that we need to do now is let this mixture sit for a few months under a Jersey Turnpike overpass and then pan fry it on the hood of a 1969 Chevy Camaro. So there you have it, one of the finest recipes that 70s rock has to offer. It's best eaten while driving 20 miles above the speed limit, headed out of town with a lover in the passenger seat. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Record Recipes. I've been Head Chef Polyphonic. If you've got any recipes you'd like to see on the next episode, please leave them in the comments. If you like what I do and you've ever thought about doing it yourself, or even if you just want to deepen your own personal relationship with music, you should check out my Nebula class. In that class, I talk about a lot of my perspectives on music, and I walk you through a step-by-step -step analysis of a couple different songs. You can check that out now by signing up to Nebula with the link in the description. That link will get you all sorts of awesome stuff. Early, ad-free access to my videos, exclusive content, and more. There's also more classes by people like Amy Nolte and Philip from Volksgeist, and there's an ever-growing list of original series to check out. Lately, I've been really enjoying Unrated, Maggie Mae Fish's history of sex and sexuality in film. Nebula is a space created by and for creators. We built it as a place where we can explore weird and experimental projects 
projects that could never make it on YouTube. Nebula also supports creators' rights to fair use, which means that none of my videos there have any music removed for copyright reasons. If you want to check it out and support the channel, head on over to go.nebula.tv slash polyphonic. That link will get you 40% off an annual plan, which means Nebula costs you just a little more than $2.50 a month. Nebula is something that I really believe in and something that I really think is going to continue to grow and do amazing things. So if you want to help us grow and help us make more cool, weird videos, check out go.nebula.tv slash polyphonic now. And hey, thanks for watching. You're one cool cat.